Cringy characters done good. Tell me stories when a player or a DM introduced a character that would normally be a red flag, i.e. lolly, cat girl, edgelord, etc. But ended up being a fun and interesting game. Era 404, game not found. <laughs> <laughs> I have a player in my party who likes some CBT concepts, like being a deprived fuck, ex-slave, goblin, etc. With his first character, ex-dwarf raised by gnomes, exactly as it sounds. <laughs> he what had some like success. <laughs> he had some successes, as he was a bard cosplaying a literal bum. He had really low wisdom, intelligence, and he was a mess. He was messing around with everybody because he roleplayed a man who had nothing to lose and would suck your dick for a <laughs> bottle of spirits. <laughs> he died two sessions in from Vrock. RNG God wanted him to die. So his next character was an ex three times with different owner's slave that had burn marks all over his body, had no ears, nose, had to resort to wearing band-aids on his face to cover how ugly he is. Because of losing keen hearing and sense of smell and being a fucking ghoul, he attacked like an idiot often too. He would also preach everyone lectures about serving his god and being socially awkward. The thing is, amid the invasion of demons, cleric Govil Mater is exactly who you need. So instead of being all edgy and deprived, he got himself to a decent character. And I, as a DM, as a recognition for his services and hardships he faced, decided to give him Ill Matter's blessing and cure his face so that he would look better and could smell things. It's really nice how his strive to be edgy turned nice, just because he was serving the right god. That's nice. At least That's not of, bad. Like, as far as it goes, like, you know, like, I, I get it, the guy just wanted to play as, like, the local crazy person yeah. mental. But, like, you know, it's nice that things turned out well. Yeah. Normally they always end up dead, these characters. <laughs> yeah. Like, they always end up dead in a dumpster somewhere. <laughs> so, that's nice that he worked out. It, it worked out for him, you know? I once played the most edgy looking guy I could come up with. My friends groaned when I described him as sitting alone away from everyone else. But as the first session went on, and they actually talked to the guy, they found out he was just a shy, socially maladjusted dragon boo who wore black because he could go without cleaning it longer. Sat alone because he got nervous around people and liked to read by himself, and said things like, then walk in my shadow, because he thought it sounded poetic and cool. He was just a harmless dweeb who wanted to serve a dragon, so he left his family's estate to get strong enough to do so. Though he did fly into an autistic rage when a villain ended up knowing more about dragons than he did, when he used that knowledge to threaten him with a dragon's jaw, a horrific torture method. Then the guy went, well actually you perform that by doing X, not Y. <laughs> well actually! <laughs> actually! Yeah, yeah. Well like that one's not too bad. You reckon this is where a lot of it comes from, like just straight up autism a lot of the time? When it comes to like, oh, he's really cool, he's sitting in the corner alone by himself. You know what I mean? Do you reckon this is where, like, it... Yeah, probably. It, it, it stems from, maybe? Maybe. Maybe the, maybe these people that are just kind of edgy, they're currently socially adjusted. They don't really know how to get on. Is this more common than not? Yeah, no, it is. Or is it just because people think it's cool? Actually, it could, actually, be, yeah, it actually, could be that. Let's be serious, it's because people think it's fucking cool. <laughs> Like, I'm, I'm, I'm got a bit like, logic and reason behind this idea. But there's no logic there's, and reason behind no, it. <laughs> there's just not. I enjoy taking concepts that make people hesitant on paper and turning them into memorable or fun ideas. I played a Christian in a one-shot turned mini campaign that I was using a homebrew class that sounded excessively edgy on paper. Basically, the character was an ancient divine spirit and a servant of the settings version of Anari o- Okami. Look, the boys are going to garn about it. Look, They're going to garn whatever look, way I try I'm and pronounce sorry. these. We don't, do, we don't do the Japanese stuff for yeah. guy boys. But I played him as basically an out of touch Japanese tourist who was on vacation. Overwhelmingly polite and positive, but built mechanically to help and aid the shit out of people. He always referred to people politely, even though he couldn't speak common. A class ability allowed people to understand him regardless. That's kind of good. I like that. Yeah, I like, like that. The idea of like, you know, you get what they're on about. Yeah. You do the poke and be like, hey, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. yeah. Like, you the thumbs up. Yeah, that's what I'm on about. And he even had moments where he helped the baddies. In obviously one-sided situations, I'd never go out of my way to dick over the party. But the character just liked being helpful. <laughs> that's almost endearing, actually. <laughs> that, that, is actually that actually is very endearing. He just wants to help. <laughs> Look, guys, he's doing his best, okay? <laughs> The character had gone down as one of the funniest and most wholesome characters in a campaign about a Magitech Eldritch experimentation lab. 
We have plans to revisit the setting eventually, with more silly characters, and I was going to see what I can whip up using the MFOV Catgirl Sorcerer. <laughs> TLDR. It's honestly about the mentality of the player more than anything. Any concept can be good or bad. Yes. 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 I actually couldn't agree with that anymore, to be honest with you. Like, it really does come down to how you can do Like, you know, it really comes down to the player. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whether or not it's going to be cringe or not. I, I do love this idea of the, like this wee fella that just, like, guys, I just want to help. Please okay, help. please. <laughs> I really like that, honestly. That's a really cool one. Hey guys, this is just a quick bit of promo. We got our website up and running and we have a massive restock on most of the models. However, one of the cool things about the website is if there's a model that you're waiting on, you can enter your email and be put on a waiting list. And it's not just good for you so then you'll know when they're restocked. We can also see what you guys are waiting on and what we should be printing. (laughs) So either way, the models are by far the best way to support this channel and to help us do videos that YouTube would find inappropriate on the platform. (laughs) Um, like, let's be serious. The models are pretty based looking, so. Once again, just look at the titties. Look at the lizard titties! <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with the video. Player retires their null barbarian rogue after committing a murder behind the party's back and getting caught. Brings in new PC. A literal, normal, average, completely out of place human high school boy from modern day. That's a great old one warlock. That sounds like anime to me. That does sound like I'm, anime. I'm sorry to say it, boys, but that's anime. No explanation given for why he's in this high fantasy game. Be me, high fantasy. (laughs) Just rolled with it. (laughs) Proceeds to fourth wall break the entire time until the end of the game. His quick wit and excellent role playing made him the best and most memorable part of the game for everyone involved, despite how out of place he was. I think he caught that from anime. Yeah. I'm just putting that out there. That sounds like straight up just copy pasted. Yeah. And I don't know what anime it was from, but it could have been any of them. It could have been all of them. (laughs) Honestly, all anime might as well be High School Boy meets World. I don't know. <laughs> I played a Goblin Slayer clone in Warhammer Fantasy since I rolled the Rat Catcher job. Just instead of a goblin based autism, it was rats. Luckily, in setting, being a monotone autist with a murder boner actually works. And with some lucky rolls and being in the right place at the right time, ended up impressing an Inquisitor with his single minded hatred and got inducted into the Order. It was a fun game. Be honest with you, the other murder who actually kind of works in Warhammer Fantasy though. Yeah. Because that's like, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but see when it comes to like Warhammer sentence, the only actual emotion that anyone ever actually has is pure undiluted anger. Rage. It's just pure, pure rage <laughs> yeah. at all times. Yeah. You know, so it kind of works, you know, that's not a bad one. Yeah. Like, it really depends on the setting, like, you know, whether or not it's going to be cringe or not. I have some characters that many would consider cringe that turned out to be awesome to play and became my favourite character that I played. One was a dude in a world where dragons were gone for thousands of years, and he was basically the reincarnated son of the old boss dragon. Currently I'm playing an 800 year old pagan vampire from a bloodline that's basically extinct with the body of an 11 year old girl. Oh god, oh, god. why? Why? I'm sorry, I just can't have that. <laughs> no. She didn't even start out with the 800 year old part. But the campaign started shortly after she got turned into the 1200s, and we've reached modern times by now. Important part is that she left the path of humanity long time ago, and couldn't even engage in sexual acts if she wanted to, and made it clear that very bad things would happen to anyone that tried. Well, that's, well, that's not bad. That's, that's one way to play that, a young, yeah, that's, like a, a child. That's yeah, one way to play. that's a good way to deal with it, you know? <laughs> that way you can sort of sidestep the whole weird sexual part of it, and focus on the interesting aspects of playing such a character. The thing is, like, if you live that long, you really aren't part of, like, you know, you really are that. How do you relate to people? You're that old, oh, yeah. Like, but what? saying that you've been around for long enough to adapt to relate to people. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. But people get stuck in their way an awful lot, you know. At what age group do you get stuck in your way? And how, like, you know, what, what is that for vampires? Or what is that for elves, even? Oh, Dwarves. elves are always stuck in their fucking way. You know what I mean? Dwarves birth. are just the same, you know? It's it, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. But no, that's actually, at least you can find one good work of that. Yeah, you know, the whole... Which is something. <laughs> well, what do you guys think? A lot of the time, it really comes down to just if the player's decent or not, if it's bad or not, you know? And it really they're depends still going to on... be cringy, though. Yeah, they well, yeah, you're probably going to be a bit of cringe. But, like, you know, let's be honest with you, most role-playing devolves into, like, porn-level acting. 
Yeah. Let's be serious. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, we try and get ourselves at it's not, but... But know. it is. <laughs> well, look, as long as you have a bit of fun, fun you who cares? Mean, see, you know, it doesn't matter, <laughs> this sort of stuff. It really comes down to group dynamics for me, whether or not it's cringe or not. Yeah. Realistically, that's... What about what you? Think. Have you ever seen, like, a cringy character done well? Because I haven't. Yeah, there's not... I can't think of any off the top no. of my head. Um, I I think the closest one I can think of, I was playing with a guy, and he was playing, like, a, a barred dwarf. And he's like... Get it? He's a dwarf and he likes his beer, guys. <laughs> beer? Oh, oh. It's like, oh god, okay, fine, <laughs> fuck me, Jesus Christ, I can't deal with this anymore. I can't do that. Oh, but you know, no, but guys, you see, the thing is, the thing is, so he wants to master. He wants to become a master, like beer. You know what I mean? He wants to be the best, best beer, beer about. But the problem is, anytime he gets close. Drinks it all and he forgets the next morning. Oh no! Oh, it's it, you know that that's the most I would really come across. It's more just like it's done. It's too. It's old. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, okay, you know, group consists of orc barbarian. You got a elven fucking uh, ranger. You've got a, a you know what I mean? Fucking whatever. It, it, it you know. feels like you know like. Think out of the mold, try to at least, you know what I mean? It's okay to be human sometimes. You don't really need to play an animal race yes. to be cool. It's okay to be a fi- it's okay to be that fighter. Yeah, exactly. It's okay. It's okay to be that fighter champion. It's okay. <laughs> it's, don't worry about it. You know what I mean? You'll get there. I believe in you guys. Uh but no, let us know if what you guys came across. For me I have I can't think of any good like ones that you would think oh god no not this I can't think of any like good cringy characters that have been played well I, I, I literally I, can't I can't think of a single one I, I, I know no I've never experienced it personally but if, but if you guys have I definitely want to hear know. it yeah I want to hear about it I want to hear about it because it is a bit of a Myth. <laughs> Myth, yeah, um, canary in the coal mine, sort of. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know. But look, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely let us know your stories down below when we make a video on it, if we get enough good ones, and we'll see you later. Bye!